guys. Happy 2019. I realise it's been quite a while since I've uploaded. Actually, the last video I did was before Christmas time, so it's actually been a few months. Apologies for that. Uh, yeah, things got kind of crazy busy and I couldn't really upload any videos. So yeah, this is officially my first video of 2019. So yay, happy new year for me, I guess. Well, I mean, it's late for you guys. It's like two months into it, but whatever. First video for me for 2019. So yeah, some things have changed. Uh, as you may or may not be able to tell, uh, you probably can't because there's nothing really behind me, but the background's different. I have moved. So pretty much before all the reptiles were in my room with me, and that's where I did all my filming, and it was kind of cramped and kind of difficult to film sometimes. So yeah, I think it's just got a little bit stagnant, I guess, personally, that's how I felt. But I'm now living alone and the reptiles have their own room now, so uh, videos may be more frequent now, they might be a little bit better than before because I'm not filming in my bedroom. Also guys, I am sorry if my voice sounds a little croaky in this video, I have a bit of a sore throat today. But uh, just have to bear with me on that one. So yeah, I am really excited for 2019 and my YouTube channel just because, as I was saying, the reptiles now have their own room, so I will be able to just film things much more easily and hopefully slightly better quality maybe. Uh, yeah, so sorry again about not uploading for like, what, two or three months or something like that. This time of year is always kind of busy for me in general because, you know, December, you obviously have the obvious holidays like, you know, Christmas and New Year's Eve and Boxing Day and whatnot. But on top of that, there's also my birthday, my mother's birthday, a couple of my friends' birthdays are all in December. So there was that as well. Plus, I did travel to Queensland for about a week just to catch up with some family. So I couldn't film then. Then when I got back, I moved. So I had to then organize basically all my animals and everything else you have to organize when you move. And I had to move all that into my new place. So that took another week and a bit to sort out after it like, well, it actually took more than a week. You know how it goes. You have to go around inspecting places and applying and blah, 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 blah. So yeah, that was a couple of weeks or so there taken up. And um, before I knew it, it's been like, what, two months, three months since I've made a video. And I've just been so busy with so many things that I haven't really found the motivation to do this and get the camera out and film. So, uh, but yeah, here we are in the new reptile room. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick look at the new reptile room. Honestly, it's nothing amazing, but I'll show you guys anyhow. And I do have some ideas for this year with YouTube. Um, only a couple at the moment, but I'm sure more ideas will come to me as things progress. Uh, there's a few things I wanna change in my new reptile room and upgrade, and I wanna build a few new enclosures. A couple of species I wanna eventually get and work with. So. Yeah, I will give you guys a quick tour, quick view of the room, and then I'll show you what's uh, to come for the new year for me. All right, guys, so as you can see, when you first enter the new room, uh, the lighting is a lot better, which I love. I mean, I've got two nice windows here that actually get sunlight most of the day, or at least natural light coming through, which that's great for me because um, filming in my old room where hardly any light came in the window, made lighting horrible like just getting the right lighting for filming was yeah a pain all the time and I, I always hated the way my lighting was in my room for filming so this uh, room has a lot of natural light coming through which is great so when you first walk in the room obviously you're facing these windows if you look to your right I got my three three foot enclosures just there with um, the same old crew in them that I had before don't need to get, go into too much specifics because for those of you who watch my videos, you know what I've got. And um, obviously next to that i got Monty in his um, enclosure. And yes, he does have a plastic Tupperware tub as a water bowl. That is temporary. Uh, his old ceramic bowl is way too small for him now. It's the largest possible one they make. And he likes to bath in it sometimes when he's shedding and um, yeah, only half of him fits in it and he overflows it. So for now I just put this in because he can fully uh, soak in it. I have ordered a extra large bowl for him that he can fully fit in. It's probably going to be here in the next week or so. So, um, yeah, that's basically him. Other than that, he's about the same, same old, same old with his enclosure. On the other side of the room, got my little frog terrarium, which is um, something I'm going to be changing. I'll go into details of that in a sec. Then I got my rack system here with all the other crew in it pretty much, all my other snakes. And I got all my little hatchlings just there what's left of them um, and yeah 
that is basically the Reptile Room. It is quite simple. It will be uh, getting some things upgraded in this, you know, this year. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to just uh, let you guys know what I'm going to be changing so you guys have an idea of what to expect out of me for the next, for this year. So one of the first things I would like to start working on as of this year and actually quite soon because it's kind of needed. Um, you guys remember my two jungle carpets, my breeding pair? Well, they need a bigger enclosure, so that's the first thing to come. Jungle carpets do like to climb, so what I plan on doing is giving them something with a bit of height. Coincidentally, uh, since moving in this room, I uh, can do that now. You may or may not remember when I first built this little rack system here. It was in my bedroom, so I had to kind of make it bedroom friendly. Uh, I had a TV, <laughs> and that's what this big that's what this big space here was for, was for the TV. But um, since moving and these guys, well, all my animals now have their own room, no TV in this big space. For now, I've just put all my hatchlings there, but they don't really need to stay there. But what I want to do is use this space for these jungle carpets. Because it's quite tall, I mean, it's about two foot tall, maybe two and a bit foot tall. It's about two foot wide and about three foot long. So much better than what they're currently in. So what I plan on doing is obviously putting a back on this and some doors in the front. So I'm either going to go sliding glass doors or I'm just going to make one big door that opens kind of like a cupboard style door, just like a wooden frame with a glass door or a perspex door which the hinges and a lock and I can just open it willy nilly like a cupboard pretty much. Or I'm going to cut some glass at work, put runners on it and have sliding doors. I'll also cut holes in the side and put ventilation. Uh, you know, I just make, cut some holes with my hole saw, put some mesh over those holes, I'll install a light up top. <clears throat> I'll implement some form of heating in there. <clears throat> Sorry guys, my voice is um, struggling today, I've had a bit of a cold, so yeah, sorry about that. But um, yeah, this is eventually going to be their enclosure, and because it's taller, I can um, put in some branches, they have some room to climb, they have room to get away from each other a bit, because um, like at the moment I'm keeping them in tubs. and. I mean, that's all well and good for breeding purposes because, yeah, like most breeders will put their snakes together in tubs, they're in close quarters, so they breed. But I uh, just generally want to keep these guys together long term, whether I'm breeding them or not, so I'd rather than have something a little bigger. So that's the first thing to come from me, is uh, changing this little setup here to customize for these two. So once I've um, finished with the jungle carpets and set them up, the next thing I want to start working on is my green tree frog and red, tree, red eye tree frog um, terrarium. So you remember this terrarium I set up, it's quite small, it was literally just an experiment terrarium, not a long term one. Uh, I was just trying it out with these frogs to see how they go. Uh, more or less, not so much trying it to see how it goes with the frogs, but just I was trying a new thing with the expandable foam and making a terrarium out of that. I didn't want to make one too overly massive and expensive in case it just didn't work out. So I started with something small and simple, and it's been great, so I uh, am now going to go ahead and upgrade it. So what I want to do is use, obviously, get a bigger tank. So I'm thinking maybe two foot by 18 by maybe 20 inches tall to 26 inches tall even possibly. I'll either just go a standard glass fish tank in those dimensions or I'll get an actual reptile tank with um, opening doors at the front. Either way it'll be something longer, wider and taller. I'm gonna have more plants in it. So that's the next thing to come after I've fixed up the jungle carpets is to upgrade the frog enclosure. And in case anyone's wondering, this little fella is doing great, this green tree frog and the red eye, mind you, they're both doing really well, they're eating like absolute beasts. Both of them feed from tongs, which uh, makes feeding them so much easier because I hate just dropping live food in their terrarium because half the time it escapes and the other half the time it ends up in the water and it's dead and I, it pollutes. So it's so good that both this, this little fella and the red eye tree frog both now feed from tongs. It makes I can make sure that they eat everything and there's no waste. And lastly guys, uh, the other thing I'd like to get around to doing as well in this room is just changing the heating system. Uh, when I just had maybe five to ten snakes, it was okay to have you know heat, heat mats and heat lamps and heat cables and stuff like that running uh, systems. But I'm well above that number now. And honestly, it's a lot of electricity, a lot of power points, a lot of plugs and cords and stuff just to heat everything. As you can probably tell. 
someone's cranky. <laughs> Little children's bike and nearly bit me. Um, yeah, as you can probably tell, I'm, I'm sweating making this video. It's quite warm in this room because of all the heating uh, things in here. But um, yeah, I want to make it more energy efficient because it's like I said, it's a lot of cables, plugs, and yeah. I am actually planning on just heating the whole room with one uh, heat source rather than multiple heat sources on multiple enclosures. A lot of uh, snake breeders or just people who keep large amounts of snakes in one room, they do this. It's just much more energy efficient. Uh, provided you're not keeping snakes that are from vastly different environments that have all these different requirements, you can do this. All of my snakes are Australian native snakes. Yes, if some are from uh, South Sydney, some are from North Sydney, some are maybe from Central area as well as like the bearded dragon for example is a central species. So look, I'm going to leave the things like uh, Ridgetail Monitor and bearded dragon with their own separate heating because they do like it a bit hotter, especially the Ridgetail. Uh, but most of my Australian native pythons, they all kind of like that very much 28 to 32 degrees Celsius hot spot or basking spot in their enclosure. So what I'm going to do I'm going to get maybe an oil heater or some other sort of low wattage heater and uh, just have that heater heat up the whole room. I'll of course have the heater plugged into a thermostat with the thermostat sensor in the center of the room somewhere or just basically where the rack systems are. So it'll just keep that room at like a constant 30 degrees temperature. It's just much more energy efficient and um, I've been speaking to a few other breeders they all seem to do it these days because it's just so much easier to keep a large amount of snakes this way. Now I know some of you guys are thinking, well hey, what about the cold spot? Reptiles need a hot spot and a cold spot. You can't have the whole thing 30 degrees. That is true under, cer under certain circumstances. I mean, yes, they do need a cool spot to cool down, but you've got to understand the reason why snakes cool down to start with. Um, if your snake is fed on a weekly basis and it's never really overly hungry, it's going to be fine being in constant 30 degree temperature or 28 degree temperature depending on this time of year. Usually during summer you won't even have to heat them. Like at the moment this room seems to just stay at 30 degrees with all the heating stuff off. My heat cable's off but it's warm as, it was warm as hell in here and all the snakes are very active because of the heat. So it's not even the thing during summer to have the heating on for me here in Australia but um, yeah what I was saying before. If your snakes are well fed they're quite happy to stay in the warmer area of their enclosure because snakes can't regulate their own body temperature. They have to um, do that externally by basking in the sun in the wild or sitting on a warm rock or something like that. And the only reason they like to warm up to start with is A, if they're hungry and they need the energy to go out and look for food, or B, they've just eaten a big meal and they need to uh, warm up so their digestion and metabolism speeds up so they can actually digest their meal. The only time snakes seek out cool spots over warm spots is when they haven't had a feed in a very long time, they're running on empty, they're running low on fat reserves, so they're purposely cooling their body down to slow everything down so they can last longer. If your snake's well fed, not overfed, but just well fed on a weekly to two weekly schedule and it's never starving hungry, by rights, it shouldn't really want to seek out a cooler spot over a warmer one. Unless, of course, the warmer one is too hot for the snake. So, provided you can maintain the room at that perfect temperature of, say, between 28 and 30 degrees, it's not too hot, but it's not too cold. It's enough they can remain active, but not so cold that they're kind of going a bit dormant. Um, their metabolism's still going quick enough that they're eating their meals and digesting them on a kind of weekly to two weekly sort of time frame before they're due to be fed again, it's fine. It's, you just got to get the temperature set just right for them. So that is why I'm fine with heating the whole room and not having a hot spot. Rather than having one spot of the enclosure that's a little bit hot, they can sit in it for a bit but then they got to go cool down. Rather than doing that and then having a, a hot spot and a cold spot which is like day and night and the snakes going back and forth, I just maintain the room at a happy medium. They're being fed on a weekly basis. Um, as long as I can regulate the speed of their metabolism and digestion via the temperature with their feeding um, schedule. By the way, I shouldn't really need to seek out a cool spot. I mean, if I was to stop feeding them for a very long time and they were getting really, really hungry and the room was really, really warm and they couldn't escape that warmth, yeah, that would be bad because 
their metabolism would be going fast and they wouldn't be able to last as long on an empty stomach. So, yeah, in the wild, that's why they do that. And that's why, yeah, most people do do that, but you don't really need to. Like, actually, uh, one breeder of green tree pythons um, that I was, I guess, looking into, because on that note, I'll get into that in a second, but um, he actually does that. He has one room full of green tree pythons, and none of them have heating in their enclosures. The entire room is just heated by one oil heater that is plugged into a thermostat. And while we're on the topic of green tree pythons, now I'm not going to guarantee this one because um, they're an expensive python here in Australia. I don't know what they're worth in the US or the UK or wherever you guys, wherever some of you guys might be from that are watching. Comment down below. Let me know what you, what sort of prices green tree pythons go for in your area. Because honestly, I would love to get one. I've been offered one. I've been offered two actually from two different people. Around a thousand dollars each, and that is cheap here. Like, generally, a really nice green tree python, a really high-end one, like a Cape York sort of one, um, with really nice colours, they can go from anywhere from $2,000 up to $4,000 plus. I mean, two to $4,000 plus, depending where you're getting them from. If you're getting them from an actual shop, forget about it. They're, they're so expensive. From a breeder, you're looking at maybe one to two thousand dollars for a half decent green tree python so yeah it's on my list i'd like to get one this year but we'll see how we go because it is kind of pricey and i have just moved <laughs> so i mean money isn't exactly plentiful right now so yeah we'll, we'll get there but i would love to get a green tree and um set up a terrarium for that one as well a nice big terrarium with live plants and stuff like that so that would be great that is my goal for this year, but we will see where we go. I have a lot of other things to sort out first, like the carpet python enclosure, the frog enclosure. But yeah. Well, that's it for today, guys. Hope you guys still checking my channel out because, yeah, it has been a while and that's kind of my fault. But, uh, yeah. Hopefully things will be better from now on, now I've moved. Hopefully video quality will be a little better. And I promise I'll try not to leave it for two or three months this time. I may not be doing weekly uploads like I was before, but it won't, it'll maybe be monthly, it may be fortnightly, who knows. But we'll see where we go. But at the least, I'm not going to leave you guys waiting around for three months for a video of me. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. As usual, you know the drill, guys. I've been through this a thousand times. Twitter's down below. Follow me there. Also, Instagram down below. You can go on there and check out my stuff as well. I usually upload reptile photos as well, as well as photos from my work. So you get to see some aquarium stuff as well. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next video. Bye-bye.